fun. I can't see you anymore, but you look really good. All of you look so good today. <laughs> uh, let's stand and worship Jesus today. Father, we love you. Thanks for waking us up. We get a whole other day. Thank you for the breath in our lungs and life in our bodies. We just thank you for this really good news about Jesus. That he took our place and now we can live through him and for him. Because it's so much better and it's so much fun. Thank you for working in us. We love you.
Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for totally getting rid of our past. It's dead and it's gone and it's going to stay there. You're so good. When I feel the fear come, I won't run away, even in valley. Your presence is enough and I feel the shaking. Oh, I will stand my ground. Your presence is enough. You are with me. Father, you're for me. And fear will never conquer me. Cause I belong to Jesus. I'm never alone, I'm never abandoned, oh fear you'll never conquer me, cause I belong to Jesus. When I feel the pressure, I won't run away, even in tension. is enough when I'm in the mystery. Oh, I will stand my ground. My God, you are enough. You are with me. Father, you're for me. Oh, fear will never conquer me. Never abandon, fear will never conquer me, cause I belong to Jesus. Mm, I belong to Jesus. When the rain fell. When the floods came, when the wind blew, I was okay. You were right there. You're in every step I take. Come on, sing. When the night falls, when my heart aches, if I struggle, I will not pray. You'll be right there. You're in every step I take. When the rain fell, when the floods came, when the wind blew, I was okay. You were right there, you were in every step I take. When the night falls, when my heart aches, if I stumble, I will not pray. You'll be right there.
never abandon Oh, fear will never conquer me Cause I belong to Jesus Oh, fear will never conquer me Cause I belong to Jesus Oh, fear will never conquer me Cause I belong to Jesus Oh, fear, oh, fear will never conquer me Lifting our hands is just a sign of surrender to the Lord. It's not, you're not going to get weird and Pentecostal or something. It's just, Lord, we're here. We're surrendered. We believe this. Because you are with me. Oh, Father, you're for me. Fear will never conquer me. Because I belong to Jesus. I'm never alone. Never abandoned, or oh, fear will never conquer me, cause I belong to Jesus. Sing, oh fear, fear will never conquer me, cause I belong to Jesus. That's so good. That's so good. Mm. You know, Jesus promised us that he would never leave us or forsake us, and I don't know if we think about that enough. Like, do we really take it to heart when he said, I am with you to the end? Behold, I am with you even till the end of the age. He said, go. Give people the kingdom. Give people the kingdom. It's not just a Sunday thing. Like, we all have jobs. We all have stuff that we do during the week, and that's when we're supposed to walk with him. That's when we're supposed to shine and give people what heaven is like. That's why we get in the word to know our Father so we can be like him. He said, when you pray, go to your room and close the door and pray to your Father in heaven. And he who sees the secret place will reward you openly. And that's not just like money or whatever. When you're with him, when nobody's looking, you're going to be like him when everybody's watching. It's, it's that simple. I knew a 
not in vain. Our hearts reaching heaven and fresh outpouring till the fabric open. Come, Jesus, come and rest. fire still burns within us and that every step God that wind may blow but that fire grows stronger that darkness tries to creep in but God that fire burns brighter and God as we sing this just light us up light us up this morning there is 
Yeah, we need a fresh outpouring. Yes. You know, God's been up to some really cool stuff. If you haven't been watching on the internet, there's been amazing revival that yeah. broke out at Ashbury College in Kentucky. And, and then just all yeah, over the place. Just all over the place. And it's so cool because I was reading one of the girls' testimony this week, and she's like, you know, I went to the school and I didn't even really care about much. And, and I went there, and God just radically changed my life. And that's what God's in the business of doing is radically changing people's lives. Yeah. And we don't have to travel there no. for God to touch us. We don't have to go anywhere. In fact, one of my friends on Facebook was writing how, like, he had been praying for God to give him a heart for the lost. And just, like, this week he broke down and just started bawling and bawling and bawling. Like, God, I, I want to love people the way that you love people. Amen. And God truly changed his heart. Like, he's already someone that, he's like someone that I know who went on a mission trip with me and with Todd. And, like, he loves Jesus. He, is he a pastor? Isn't he pastoring the church there? Yeah, I think he's a pastor. And, like, in this moment, God gave him such a, a spirit of, um, like how much the world needs Jesus and the only way they're going to know that Jesus loves them is through us like amen we have to go i think you're going to talk about that today. i uh, think i just might end up talking <laughs> I about that i got you today. from the last message that yes. maybe we're going to be talking about going i am going to be talking about that today revival exciting. starts right here today yeah it starts in you exactly yeah and, and it starts and really a revival is us waking back up to god and realizing the things that yeah. are important in our life and the things that aren't important in our life yeah and that's really what we all need to experience you know what it's so cool when it says in the Word of God that after Jesus rose up from the grave and it says, and Jesus appeared unto them again. And all of us need those again moments in our lives where it's like we get a fresh view of Jesus and a fresh reason of like, oh yeah, this is why I'm serving him. And this is why I'm walking this way. And we pray that happens today in your life, Absolutely. seriously, because yeah. that's what it's all about. But well, we're glad you're here. Yes. So welcome to the Rock Church, by the way. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Bethany. I'm the outreach pastor here at the Rock Church, and I have the most fun job of anyone else in the church because I get to, like, 
So what's my job? Unfun. No. And I get to talk to people all the time. And people yeah. send me messages and, you know, it's great. I love it. I get to pray for people all the time. Sometimes people come in the donut shop and ask me questions about the Bible. I love that, too. So anytime you want to talk, <laughs> well, not any time, but most of the time most I'm here. Most of the time. Terry is, too. And it's awesome. That's what we're here for, to encourage you in your walk Absolutely. with the Lord. And to also give you opportunities to love and serve our community. And that's part of my job as the outreach pastor. So we have four Saturday nights left of our Rocky Zone, which is Saturday nights from 4 to 7. Yeah. So until the end of March, we have a party scheduled every Saturday night. I think we have like two parties almost every weekend <laughs> the whole month of March. So Which is good. The people in the community are so happy that they finally have a place to go for their kids. Yeah, we were packed out last night. It was yeah. so cool. About <laughs> two weeks ago or three weeks ago, we had a uh, family come with a bunch of teenagers and, I don't know, 10 to 15, yeah. something like that. Mm -hmm. And we were climbing. And last night, they all came and they came with, like, wrestling shoes to climb. And the one girl says, look, I got tennis shoes on today. I'm ready to climb. Yes. So it was really cool. We had lots of people last night. And that's yeah. what it's all about, to love them and let them know <laughs> about Jesus and yeah. All that stuff, and, and, and it's cool. And the people always ask questions, like, how do you, are you sure this is a church? Yeah, usually what? they walk in and go, where's the church? <laughs> yeah, and last night I had someone come in to get their little bracelets for the night, and they were like, we're back. And I'm like, oh, good, I'm so glad you came back. And the dad was like, yeah, like, we were here at a birthday party two hours ago, and now we're back. <laughs> That's how much fun my kids had. They just left two hours ago, and they wanted to come back. And I'm like, awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's yeah. what it's all about. Yep. Yeah. So it's awesome. If you want to volunteer, you still have four Saturdays left to do it. So let me know, and I will send you a text message and remind you. Yes. And we can always use the help, and it's fun to hang out and get to know other people in our church family, too, when you're here serving. Absolutely. So what it's all about yes. getting com community yes. community 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 absolutely and Hanging if around. you happen to be visiting with us today if i haven't chased you down yet <laughs> you can go to our website which is yourrock.org and click on that little i'm new button and let me know your name and your number and then i can follow up with you and answer any questions pray for you anything that's how you can connect with us throughout the week so and also on the website you can give see that little purple plus sign you can give there and if you want to make tithing easy, that is the way to do it. Tithing is when we give 10% of what God has given us in income, we're giving it back to him. And you can go on there and set up like a weekly or monthly or however you get paid, however you decide to do it. And that way you don't ever have to remember to write a check or bring cash. But if you have a cash or check, you can still give those too. There's little green boxes yeah. in the back. <laughs> so that still works. We're glad. <laughs> I am glad. Yes. And we're so thankful. Yes. We thank you guys for, for giving and doing give. all that kind of stuff. And real soon, because you guys do give, we got some bicycles up here today. Oh, yeah. And the person who brought these told me there's, what, five more coming? Three, Three more coming? Three more coming for a total of five. For a total of five, yes, that's what it was. So if you walk, but just to let you know right now, Walmart has most of their bicycles on clearance yeah, because they're, they're getting, bring, ready getting ready for to be the old new. and bring in the new. Yeah. So if you want to pick up a bicycle to give away on Easter Explosion, that's yeah. one of the things we do. Well, do we have a video about that? Well, I don't know. Do you know where the video is, Logan? Logan? Let's see. Do you know where the video is? I know we have a video because I saw He doesn't the know video. where it's at. It's on my <laughs> flash drive. Go to the F drive, and there is a PDF <laughs> file there that is a video, and we'll let you see it. There's no music on it, so I have to sing as we do it. No, I can talk. That would be better. <laughs> we do need candy, lots and lots of candy. So there's a blue bin out there that says Easter Explosion, and it's this is the first time we've filled it. I probably need like eight more bins full of candy for all the kids that are coming. So keep bringing your candy. I'm gonna keep emptying the, the bin and then you guys keep filling it up, okay? Sound good? All right, here we go, here's our video. I'm hoping Terry's not gonna sing. But <laughs> Come on, you want me to sing? <laughs> Bill wants me to sing. So we had a, dr we have some like drone footage of one of our past Easter explosions. How we always get the fire truck to come. Are you gonna yes. sing? 
No, I'm not saying. I'm so this was when we were setting up. That's why there's nobody there yet. Like we were getting the rock wall ready to and go. And this year we have two of those to set up. Yeah. And there's the people as they begin to come. Yeah. This morning, I do believe it was the morning that it was 20 degrees or 23 degrees I driving think so, here. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, seriously, we bought in Porta Johns. Yep, they're sitting up there, and they were all froze. You couldn't use any of them. <laughs> Great day. And we do the egg hunt for um, special needs kids. We do a separate one for them, and then we do ages zero to three, four to seven, and eight to twelve, all in separate events. And then they gather up their eggs and they bring them over to the prize table. Yeah. And so whatever you guys want to help with, like if you want to spread eggs, you can do that. If you want to help give away prizes, if you want to run a bounce house or help with the rock wall, uh, we serve food on that day too. So there's tons of opportunities. You can text the word eggs yes. to our number. To that number right there. And yeah. you'll be an egg person. Yeah. And then it'll like answer you. And, and we forgot to tell you, anyone who texted you know. the number of eggs to that number, we get to throw eggs at you. <laughs> oh, we didn't tell them that part, did we? Okay. Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I was thinking hard-boiled. <laughs> 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 Make it a little more exciting, kind of like paintball, you know what I mean? <laughs> if you have any questions, I'll be at the Welcome Center after. Or Saturday. you can ask me. I'll answer your questions, too. I'm better at than no. she is. Just let you know. We'll see you, honey. I love you. She has to love me to get to heaven, too, just to let you know, so I can do all these kind of fun things to her. Hey, we're really glad you guys are here this morning, and I want to go back to a scripture that I've been using, and I'm going to keep using probably till Easter Sunday, and it is actually, I am going to do something what? New. How many, let's try that again. I'm going to do something? Yeah. All right, that's better. Now you guys got, because he wants to do something new in all of your lives. He doesn't want to just do it in some of your lives. God said to him, behold, I do something new, is actually what it says in the King James Version. I'm going to do something new. And he said, it's going to be so awesome, it's already happening. Now, I like this time of year. This is probably getting to be my favorite time of year. I like spring, just to let you know, because I love watching the flowers. I love when the robins come back and start singing. I don't know if you'd like it or not, but I love getting up like early in the morning, right around daybreak, and going out for a walk, and the birds just go nuts. I mean, it's like... The craziest singing time of the year when all the birds are singing and rejoicing. And I believe God did that on purpose to let us know something new and exciting was going to take place. And he wants to announce it with the birds. And the robins have been collecting. I've noticed there's been out prayer walking. i got red-winged blackbirds back at my feeder again. And they've been singing in the morning already and it's getting ready. And I believe God did that to let us know that something exciting. And I, I believe with all my heart, too, that before God does something really amazing, he changes the songs in the church world and gives us new things to sing and new ways to worship and new ways to praise. And God's been doing that over the last five or six years. And I really believe with all my heart, God's ready to just explode again one more time. Listen, I know a lot of people are like gloom and doom. That's not what the Bible says. I know I have Christian friends that always like to quote this scripture, last days, perilous times will come and all that kind of stuff. Well, they missed the other scripture that said, before the last and coming day of the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon what? All flesh. So, yeah, it's going to be bad, but there's also going to be a river of God that's going to flow, and people are going to be touched, and lives are going to be changed. And you need to prepare for that. You need to get ready for that. And I want to kind of take you on a journey that it's already happening. Don't you recognize it? So this morning, before I go any further, I asked somebody to help me do this service, and I wanted to share his testimony. His name's Bill. So if you give it up for Bill, come on up here, Bill. Thank you. Bill, you get your microphone back. Oh, yeah. He already did the first service, so he's, he's not quite as intimidated and scared now. He's breathing yeah, better. Four people here. Well, it's okay. It's all right. All right. We only gave him some eggs if you mess up, they'll throw them. Oh, so yeah. it's all good, okay? <laughs> so you're safe. But no, Bill is, oh, when did you start coming to church? Uh, this church? Yeah. Uh, yeah about a year ago. About a year ago? Well, that's cool. About a year ago you snuck yeah. in, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. So I wanted you to hear, like, Bill's story. You have to hold your mic up here so they get you. Okay. There, you there. Me? No, that's much better. Yeah, it's that deep voice. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Bill. I've got to know Bill through the years and, and all that kind of stuff. So, Bill, I'm just going to tell everyone a little bit of your story because I asked you this one time. I, I love it whenever people start coming to church and they look at me and say, my husband, my wife will never come to church. 
That's always to me like, okay, we'll find out what God does with that. How many know God's bigger than your situation? And you've got to get that. It doesn't matter how impossible it seems to you. God's up there like, <laughs> watch me. You know, he's really good at that stuff. Well, Bill actually was, I was told that he was an atheist and he wouldn't come to church. All right. Now, this atheist is no longer an atheist. He knows Jesus and, and he got baptized, which we'll talk a little bit about. Yes. So yes. you've been on a journey, yeah? Oh, yes. Very long journey. <laughs> very long journey. Yeah. So tell them a little bit about your life pre- uh, as she said, I was an atheist. Uh, a pretty crazy life I lived throughout the years. Uh, grew up in one of the worst parts of the city. Uh, gangs, drugs, you name it. I was probably involved in it at one time. Uh, I was kind of like the boogeyman, I guess people would say. Uh, but in other words, if he showed up at your house, you were having a bad day. Yeah, very bad. He's a little day. short, <laughs> so I could see how that would take place. I mean, he's not very big, so I can see why people wouldn't be intimidated by you showing up at their door, but <laughs> anyhow, it's all good. You had hair then, right? Uh, no, actually, I've been shaving for okay, a long okay, time. Okay, okay, just was curious. I thought it was a little more scarier <laughs> without it. <laughs> I thought maybe you had hair at that time, because I had hair once, but it, I it's did like too. 26 so I had to let kids go. And yeah. That all went away. <laughs> <laughs> So you were on the north side of Pittsburgh. Yes, I was in the north side. Uh, I was a troubled youth. I uh, didn't have the family that, you know, to support me and do the things that the father and mother should be doing for their kids. Uh, uh, started off a life of crime, young, uh, probably nine years old when I started getting into bad, bad trouble. That's young. Yeah, I was very young. Uh, Kept just going down that road and went through all kinds of trials and tribulations, I guess. I was, uh, I traveled a lot, was overseas, got hit with IEDs and blown up, read my last rites twice in my life already. Uh, they say the third time's a charm. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to let you know that. I'm hoping to get one more, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but... Uh, about it. I mean, like I said, I could go write a book some probably about the history of my life. Uh, I don't want to scare anybody here. But <laughs> That's right. You can scare them. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all good. It, it was pretty crazy life that I lived. You yeah, know? he grew up on the north side of Pittsburgh, right? Yes, north side of Pittsburgh. I don't know if anyone knows the north side of Pittsburgh or not. It's it's a lot better now, just to let you know that, because they've been kind of revitalizing it. But yeah, they're I remember the life. north side of Pittsburgh when I moved to Pittsburgh in the early 90s, and it was not a place that you wanted to hang no, out a whole no, lot. No, it wasn't. A lot of drugs and fights and all that just craziness. Just not a good place. Yeah, not a good place. So Bill actually ended up coming to church because his wife came to church, and his wife was invited by Amanda Brady. If you don't know her, she works with our youth, and, and she was in the first service. And I said, how did she get here? And she got here because of the Homework Help Center that we did in 2020 because of the COVID that was going on and all the schools closed. So we actually opened up our building and did all that kind of stuff and tried to help all the kids with their computers. And we had, I think at the peak we had like 43 kids. Where'd my wife go? She's over there. I think that's how many <laughs> kids we ended up having, like 43. And, and it was really cool. It was actually a brainchild of my wife one morning. She woke up and she says, God told me to make a homework help center. And I said, what's that look at? We're going to bring all the kids to the church. And I said, okay, good luck with that. <laughs> that's all I told her, you know. I came, I think, a couple times and let them rock climb, and I think I was actually, no, I was building the rock walls at that time in 2020, so they got to rock climb. We had set up bounce houses, and they had a little bit of community to be involved in, but that's how they all happened. And, and it's really interesting, I, I, I told them in the earlier service, and I just want to tell you this, it's really fun to me as a pastor in certain times, some other days it's not, but it's fun whenever, like, a husband finally comes to the wife, you know, the wife starts coming to church and kind of starts like it, and the, the wife's like, why don't you come to church with me? And they always walk in like this, and they sit down. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> I know it was you. It was him. He was one of those people that walked in like this. The only reason they're there is they're hoping maybe after church because they came to church, so they might get lucky after church. That was So, me. you know, they sit there, and they're like, maybe if I go to church, maybe they'll be happy. And uh, I'll, I'll be lucky. But, you know, it was really cool because I got to watch Bill with his progression as his arms. And it's really fun as a pastor because it's a little bit lower, surely you see him, like, loosen up and, like, okay, they're not as crazy as I thought they were. They weren't, like, 
<laughs> throwing water on me or anything like that or, you know, yeah. any of that stuff. And, and, and he started to get plugged in. Yeah. Yeah. And then something amazing happened in September. Yes. What I happened in baptized. September? He was baptized. In the yeah. water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a pretty cool day for you, huh? Uh, it was an amazing day. Amazing I cried. Day. I shook. I... Oh, I think about it. I still my hair is standing up right <laughs> he now. He still gets the speak. goosebumps from it. From me. Yeah. Now listen, the reason that's so important is the Bible tells us to repent and be baptized. So as we walk with God and we talk with God and we do what God tells us to do, and, and think about it, because, you know, baptism is kind of, I mean, how many people want to come to church and get soaked in a, a a whatever, baptismal tank, a crick, a tub, whatever you're getting baptized in, and come out, you know, because... You know, you spend, especially for women, it's like they spend a whole bunch of time trying to look good, and you're going to wash it all away, and you're going to come out of there, and everyone's going to see you in that space, and you're like, really, God, you want me to do this? And that's, I believe, why Jesus did that, to break down one of those walls in our lives where it's like, I'm willing to do this for you, God, because I love you, and I don't care what anyone else thinks. I'm doing it in obedience to you. And by the way, we're going to be doing water baptisms again after Easter, just to let you know, because some of you guys need to get wet. And it radically changes you because it did change you. I remember you crying. I remember yeah. you shaking. I was wondering if you'd fit in the baptismal tank that we have right here. <laughs> I was like, let's see. Will this fit? Well, we'll find out. I'm not, I, I did bring my souls all just in case. I just so fit. we could downsize you. But he did just fit, yes. And I was like, he's going to hit his head. And he doesn't have hair for any cushioning, but it's all good. I don't either. You know, yeah. I, I tell people this. God made a few perfect heads, the rest he covered with hair. <laughs> Right, so if you have hair, it's because your head's not perfect. You know, we're in the blessed crowd. Yes, like, you know. So, <laughs> so, how did you get to be where you are? Because there was a journey involved. Yes, I had a journey. Uh, I worked with a gentleman, Rich Graham. If mm -hmm. I could say his name, I'm sure he would care. Absolutely. But uh, all through my, you know time I spent with him. I worked with the guy. and How many years was that? Uh, I was with him 12 years, I think it was, 12 years. And he, I would come in beat up, fighting, hung over, drunk a lot of times. And every day he would just give me a basic a verse from the Bible and how to, how to change my life. And I'd blow him off a lot of times. Oh, I'd be fine by nine, boss. You know, and he'd, you know, that next day I'd come in, same thing. He would Give me another uh, verse from the Bible. And, and I started listening, slowly uh, listening, and stuff started making a little more sense to me. And just kept going with it, you know. Kept going with it. Now, once you all understand something, you know, a lot of times in the church world, we try to push like this moment where it's like, whoa, lightning and all that kind of stuff. It is a process, many times, finding your way with God. It is a process of learning about them. You know, I remember whenever I grew up in a, as a kid, uh, actually I was working in Pittsburgh. I wasn't a kid. I was in my late 20s, but I was walking with a man. He's about as big as you. His name was Gary. His name was Gary Cherney. And we were walking and this guy was standing on the street corner and stuff and he was yelling and screaming and preaching that people would go to hell and all that kind of stuff. And, and he looked over at me and says, I hope you're not like that. And I said, no, Gary, I'm not like that. I believe in a relationship with Jesus. And literally what he thought was he thought they were crazy. Because, you know, there's a way to love people into the kingdom of God. And there's a way to scare people from the kingdom of God. And God wants us to be loved into the kingdom of God. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a time to preach to people and say, you know, if I meet somebody who's in a car accident and they're sitting there or they're in their deathbed and someone says, well, you're going to pray for them? The first thing I say is, listen, you are the decision point of your life. There's either going to be eternity with God or there's going to be eternity in darkness. Which one do you want to do? I mean, that's not a moment to mess around. But we've got to realize something in America and in the world, the greatest way is that guy pouring into his life every day. And I want all of you to get that because you're pouring into someone's life. Maybe you're talking to somebody. Maybe they're sitting beside you where you've invited them to church and they're like, they're just finally starting to think about getting into this thing. And you talking to them and just loving them and stuff like that. Just That's the key to getting people to get that transformation. And it took years, 12 years. 12 years. And by the way, he came when he got baptized. 
Just to let you know, he was here that yeah. Sunday. Yeah, he came. Yep, he to came to show up because he didn't. To my baptism. Yeah, he didn't believe in himself. He wouldn't make yeah, sure. He was, yeah, he was making sure I was <laughs> sneaking out the back door or something. <laughs> yeah. But I want you to get that, that it's a, a journey in time. And, and it's so cool the way that it happened. Like, and so many of us are sitting there, and I've met people in the church world that get fixated on their families. Like, I just got to get my family saved. I just got to get my family. I just got to get my family. What we don't realize a lot of times is when we let go and let God, God gets your family, but it's this way, right? I mean, it's not the way you think it's going to happen. It's by God putting people in the right place at the right time in your life to slowly eat away. Because you had things in your life that happened to you that made you who you were and what you were. And can I tell you something? God is the miracle-working God that can break down walls oh, on yeah. the hardest of hearts. And the cool part is Bill here is going to change a lot of other people in life. He doesn't I even know all much. that destiny yet and all the places that God's <laughs> taken him. And it's so cool. Man, I appreciate that. Thanks, man. I love you in Jesus. I just let you know. God bless you. So it, it's kind of like this, and I just want to do something. I, I forgot about this. I've talked about this a few times, and I have a few less kernels, which you'll find out why a little bit later. But when I was in Baltimore, Maryland, in a mission event, um, doing a mission work on a church, I walked past an ear of uh, a cornfield, and God said, pick an ear of corn. Well, I wasn't stealing because God told me to do it, okay? So I took this ear of corn, and, and I sat there, and I peeled them all off and put them in a jar, and God really talked to me that day, and I actually did a Bible study later that week where someone asked me to speak, and I said, this is what God taught me. I said, one kernel goes in the ground, but God does something amazing with that and multiplies those kernels and does it. And this morning, I want to take you on a little bit of a journey with that because this is really how all of us possess our promised land because your promised land isn't about more money. It's not about more cars. It's not about more vacations. It's not about more dogs or cats or whatever it is in your life. It's really about your promised land is about touching other people's lives. It's about being a light to people that are in darkness. It's about reaching out to people like Bill that, you know what, are sitting there and they don't believe in God. And, and by the way, if you don't believe in God today, it's okay. I mean, you're welcome here as much as you want. We love you anyhow, because that's, it's, it doesn't bother me when people question God. They're like, you know, well, I just don't believe it. I'm like, that's really okay. Because you know what? I remember a, a guy said something to me once, and I proved it as a kid. And this is it. Ready for it? It's really deep. If you hang around a crick long enough, you fall in. All right? I remember my mom used to always tell me, Terry, go out and play. And we're like, we're going to the crick. This was her words. Don't get muddy, don't get wet. You know what she should have said? Be sure to come home muddy and be sure to come home wet. Because, you know, whenever you're a kid, and, you know, we didn't have much money when we were a kid, so we only had so much clothes and stuff like that, and I only had, like, so many coats. I remember one day coming home muddy, and my mom was so mad at me. She's like, here's a washcloth. Wash your coat off because you're covered in mud. Well, you know, it's just that way. When you hang around water, what happens? I mean, you try to play on the edge, and you try to do all those things and make sticks flow down, but ultimately it comes in where it just you got to get a little closer. And sooner or later, which happened to me that day, is I ended up in the water. How many know that once you're there, okay, I'm going to get in trouble with my own. Might as well make it worth my while, right? I'm just telling you how your kids think, okay? You're going to get mad. Might as well give mom and dad something to be mad about. That, at least that was my mindset. So, you know, while you're there, you might as well enjoy it. You might as well be there. Yeah. That's what we've got to realize. So God wants you to be part of this process where this started out with one kernel of corn, right? That's what it started out with. And the Bible talks about that, and he goes into it, and he says some things in John, and this is what he says. He says, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed, but if it does, it produces many seeds. So what Jesus is really saying in that moment, he says, your life is like this kernel of corn. What are you going to do with your life? Are you going to be somebody that touches other people's lives? Or are you going to be somebody that is willing to just sit there and say, this is my life. I'm going to live it the way I want to. God wants us to produce kernels. Can you imagine if every person in this room would do this and touch that many lives and let them produce into corn? What would happen to this man, this town? 
What would happen to this community that would be, would be amazing and, and so awesome? And, and it was so cool. I had a contractor with me this week doing something, which someday I'll tell you about in a later date. And he looked at me when I was showing him what I was thinking about doing. And he said to me, this is what he said, Pastor Terry, I know some people think you're crazy. He said, matter of fact, and he named somebody, she used to call this church Terry's Fun House. And he says, but he looked at me, he says, and he doesn't come here a lot, he looked at me, he says, you've changed this community. And I said, that's what we're supposed to do. How did we change the community? By being this, by doing what we're doing, by loving on people, by caring about people, by taking one seed and making it many seeds. This is God's call on your life. He didn't just call you to be here. He called you to touch people like Bill. You're working around them. Don't ever quit pouring into the people around you. You have no clue what God's going to do in their life if you just, and you don't, and you know what? They may never come to the rock. That's really okay because it's not about us. It's about people being changed and transformed by the power of God. And, and here's Bill being a testimony now to all of you who are sitting there. And it's really cool. I don't know, and I don't want to know, but if Bill got lucky by coming to church or not. But you know what, wives, can I tell you something? It's worth trying. Can I tell you something? Whatever it takes to get people to come to the kingdom of God. I want you to get that and understand that. That this thing is radical for Jesus Christ. And he wants us to be radical in the world. And he wants to change that Jesus didn't stop there. He said the man who loves his life will lose it. While the man who hates this life in this world will keep it for eternal life. So he's telling us if we love it, we're going to lose it. But if we give it away, we're going to gain it. So if I keep it in my hand, I lose my life. But if I'm willing to let it go through the process. Now listen, I tried gardening as a kid. When I was like 8 and 10 years old, my grandfather owned a farm. He died. And I started my own little garden because I loved gardening with my grandfather. And he used to, he used to call them. I don't know why they call them this. They called them truck patches. And I don't know what a truck patch was, but he always referred to it as a truck patch. And they were fields, I don't know, they weren't that small to me at least that age. You are probably from here to the road and, you know, cornfields. And then he always had the truck patch, which was full of all kind of vegetables. He had like green beans and peas and butter beans and I uh, hated butter beans, but he loved them and he sold them. So uh, how many ever had a butter bean? They're like a bean on steroid. How many never had a butter bean? Thank God. Just telling you, just right now, just give God praise that you never experienced a butter bean. They're like this big around. They also call them lima beans, butter beans, whatever you refer them to. I think they're called butter beans because you need like 20 pounds of butter to make them soft and edible. At least it's how my grandfather made them. It's like, uh, if you ever ate a bean and had like bean in your mouth, imagine like having 27 of them all at the same time mushed in your mouth. That was my experience with a butter bean. But my, my grandfather had this truck patch and we did this kind of stuff. And, and, and I, so I tried to build my own garden, remember it? And I was waiting for stuff to come up and stuff didn't come up. So guess what I did? I decided to dig down and see if anything's happening. Now, how many know when you dig down and you find out something's happening, you just broke off the baby roots and everything's dead, right? You know, in Christianity, we're a lot like that all the time. We're like, well, my life's not doing anything. I'm ready to give up. We don't realize that God is up to something amazing, and we don't realize that there's roots growing all around us, and if we don't keep walking by faith and not by sight, and we keep trusting God, and we keep living the way we're supposed to, because we sit there and say, and I've heard this, I'd be, well, I'm tired of going to church by myself. No one else wants to go with me. I'm just not going to come anymore either, Pastor Terry. And you don't realize what God's doing around you and what God's working in their lives by you walking with God consistently, by you giving your life every day, by serving, by being uncomfortable, by doing things. And yes, sometimes it's hard, right? But we've got to do it anyhow. He goes on and he says this in Mark chapter 28, 18 through 20. He says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. He says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as much Bill went through and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the earth. Notice who he's talking to. He's talking to all his people. He's saying, I want you to go. Now, I looked up scriptures, and how many people in the Bible did God tell to go? The bigger challenge is to find someone in the Bible he didn't tell to go. Because you know what, as I sat there and started going through it, so I just did a little bit of research just to let you know, and I want to get through this. 1,413 matches to the word go in the NIV Bible with 288 verses, 1,232 matches to went, 
And then I sat there and remembered 1,179 verses. And then about this one we talked about before, about giving 908 matches and 852 verses. And I thought about that. With this info, I realized something. God's people should be recognized by a giving and a going. Right? That that's what we should be known as, is people that give and people that go where God wants us to. And I did that on purpose with improper English to drive my wife nuts. All right? Because she has a journalism degree and she's just gived up on it now. She just like, notice I said gived up on it. She just gived up on it now. I've learned how to use my very special Western Pennsylvania English. She gets annoyed at all of you just like me. Like, you know, we say creek, crick. We say all those kind of weird words, you know. And she talks to me and she's like, I never do quite understand the way you people talk. And I say, and sometimes she's like, what did you say? And I'm like, dear, you need to get Western Pennsylvania educated, okay? Because we do have our own language, just to let you know. We, we butcher the English language. I'm like, this is what I learned in school. Learned. I learned it in school, right? That's where I learned it, honey. Just so you know, it's the way they taught me, so I'm okay. It's normal. Just, she's like from Maine. She's educated. You know, just let you know that. But no, I love her. I love you, honey. I'm so glad you're here to correct me all the time. I don't know if I'll get lucky today, but we'll find out later, okay? <laughs> it's not looking good right now, just saying. <laughs> oh, you just got to laugh. Come on. Don't be such, sit there and be all that way. Just enjoy life. It's real. It's God. All right? So we should be giving and going. So I realized something as I sat here and thought about this more. I want you to grow and I want you to go. I want you to realize the call that God is putting on our life. I know our world is rough. I know there's a lot of people, and you know what, that are just like, we're all gone to hell. Well, you're the difference that is going to change that. You're the people that if you walk in obedience with God and put your seed in the ground and do what God said to do, that we can change a world. Now, it's going to be hard. It's going to be scary. It's going to be expensive. It's going to be laborious. It's going to be do all that stuff. You know, I remember reading an article when I lived in Pittsburgh, and I was working with Xerox Corporation, and I remember they, in the, the I don't remember what, TV, what mag, or the newspaper was called at that time, where I lived at, I think it was the Beaver Valley Times, and I remember they were interviewing this guy, and they were talking to him, and he was like, I think if I remember, he was like 91 years old. And they had a picture of him, and he was on his tractor. And he's like, I laugh at all these young kids. They go to the gym. He says, I'm in the best shape that I've ever been in, and I'm still going and still doing all this kind of stuff. And he says, I do it every day in the fresh, clean air, and I'm a farmer, and, and it's work. How many know that? I mean, I don't know if any grew up like I grew up, but we didn't have big round bells when I was a kid. You got little bells and they didn't stack. You had to walk out in the field in the summer and stack them in the hay wagon. And then you had to back them up to the barn. You had to stack them in the barn. And the barns were always like 975 degrees because it was summertime. And, you know, if you were the guy at the top stock and stacking the hay bells, it was like hot. I mean, and then all the, it's just so fun stacking hay because all the little pieces of straw and hay go everywhere and they all stick to you. And before long, you have itches where you didn't know you could itch. And you have seeds where you didn't know seeds could go, where no man has gone before. And before long, you're like, I just need a shower, right? And that's just dealing with it. So it's a hard life. And you know what? Laboring for the kingdom of God at times is going to be like that. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be hard. It's not going to fit your agenda. But Jesus said something. Are you willing to give your life? Are you willing to make a difference? You see, this is one kernel of corn. This represents what I can do with my life. What I can do by letting myself be lost in Jesus Christ and willing to say, okay, God, I don't know how it's fully going to work, but God, I want to change people. I don't, I don't want to see people. And, you know, Bill, as you were telling that story about nine years old, it inspires me that you started getting into it at nine years old because if God has done anything in my heart, he has given me a heart for kids that are hurting at 9, 10, 11, 12 years old. And, and I sit there and go, how different would your life been if a church like this would have been plopped there? 
and they would have said, hey, come in and climb and eat pizza and play video games and, and you know, do things. And, and that's why we do what we do. We don't do this just so we can be the fun church. We don't do this just so that people can look at us and think we're strange or weird or why we do it or so we can have birthday parties here. Birthday parties are the coolest thing we're doing here. You know why? Because they come here and then they come back. And then we get them to talk to us. And, and I know there's people sitting here today that you started, you come to this church today and you're in this service today because you got sucked in. And that's a good thing. It's called evangelism. It's called loving people. It's called cherishing people. And that the whole world would know. And I look at Bill and I, I don't want kids to go down your path. I don't want them to have your story. I, I want them to experience God. I want them to experience what it's like to live. And he said he didn't have mom and dad. Man, I sit there and I remember when my first church, I had a lot of youth in it because I was like 26 years old when I started pastoring. I mean, who wants to come to a church that has a 26-year-old pastor? Not very many. I'm just telling you straight up, at least adult-wise. But the kids came. And I remember I had this older lady. She was like a grandmother and stuff like that. And she had come from a different church and she liked all the kids there and stuff like that. And one Sunday she came to me and she was like, Pastor Terry, I'm going back to my old church. I'm like, why? She's like, I just miss my friends. And I just don't fit in here because you have all the young people. And I looked at her and I said, you know how many of these young kids need a grandma to take them shopping, to, to take them for lunch, to take them for ice cream? To, I said, man, the ministry opportunity you have here to get plugged in. And, and she was older, but she looked at me and says, well, I just want to go back where it's comfortable. I wonder how many of us do that in our Christian walk where we just want to stay comfortable. God has not called you to be comfortable. God has called you to be radical. God has not called you to come to this church just to be here and to be somebody who's just sitting here and, and you can be entertained on Sunday because I'm really good looking and I'm a really funny preacher. That's not why he called you here. Thanks, Garrett, for listening to me, buddy. <laughs> That's not why God has you here. God has you here because you can be one of these kernels of the corn that go into the ground and you can radically change so many lives that you can't even imagine. And that's what Jesus is asking all of us to become. That's what God is asking every one of us to come. And I want you to grow and go. And when we're going to do something, we're going to have some micro classes that I'm going to actually be doing. If my switcher switches, that says micro classes. You can't see it, so I'm running out of time. So I'm going to be starting a class on leadership on Wednesday nights and uh, taste and see. Taste and see is each class is only an hour. If you want to do a Bible study, it's not really a class. It's going to be a Bible study. And we're going to sit down. I want you to understand why God is good. I want you to be able to sit there and ask questions and hang out with us. And there's sign-up sheets back there if you want to do either one of them. We're going to have child care. So I want you to be able to sit there and say, well, what about my kids? I already recruited Jean. Jean, right there, she's going to do it. And we're going to have the arcade open so we can throw your kids in the arcade, lock the door, put shock collars on them, duct tape them, whatever it takes. But we'll take care of them. Trust me, you might have to unzip them and unwrap them when you're done, you know, but it's all going to be good. But I want you to grow and I want you to learn, but that takes a step. Would you stand with me this morning? Who invited her? Could you tell me who brought her? Gosh. How many people tic-tacked when you were kids? How many, how many know what tic-tacking is? You don't know what tic-tacking is? You see, when we were kids, we picked corn like this, and you know what we did? We threw it at our neighbors. <laughs> I just lost some seeds, but it's all worth it. You, none of you did, how many did that? You all grew up in the country, right? You two didn't do it. You, corning, corning. We called it tic-tacking. How many corned? All right, now we're on the same page. Yeah, I just corned her. When is the class? The class is at Wednesday evenings. Not, it's only going to go for three weeks. It starts March 8th. I think that's the day. All right, yes, Gene said yes. If Gene says yes, it is right. <laughs> 6.30 is Taste and See. 7.30 is Leadership 101. I want to teach you how to lead God's way. But there's more to that. I have you standing for a purpose and for a reason. All right? You see, in order for us to become successful in the kingdom of God, we have to be willing to put our seed in the ground and die. 
That means, God, I don't want to be in control anymore. That means, God, I'm tired of telling God what I'm going to do, but God, what do you want me to do? Listen, I don't know if you know this or not, but America has more unchurched people right now in total population in America than all but 11 countries in the world. That's a lot of people. So, you know, people are like, I want to go on a mission trip. You're in the mission field. And how does that work? It takes it by us losing our lives and saying, God, I don't want to just be one seed. You see, someday I'm going to stand before God and I'm going to give an account to my life. And so are you. I don't care if you believe it or not. And by the way, people are like, what if you're wrong? Well, what if I'm right? All right? I'm making preparations. I know I'm right because I know God. He's awesome. He's amazing. He's my friend. He walks with me. He talks with me. Me and my dog went for a prayer walk this morning. It was dark. He had a glow and a dark collar on. And I mean, he was like falling over my feet all the time. But I was watching him this morning and he, I got a really cool spiritual lesson out of him. He can't see very good and he can't hear very good anymore. He's 16 years old. So he's been my friend for a long time. He stays young because he walks every day with me. Well, some days I can't coax him out of bed. But I noticed something today. He can't see very good. He stayed close to me, number one. And I realized that I was like, God, I need to stay close to you. But he also did something else. He would walk with me and we walk on a paved road, but every time he'd go into leaves, he'd come back on. It was like, okay, wrong spot. Got to find him again. Can I tell you something that's kind of like following Jesus? You got to do it his way. Because there's a lot of distractions. America is full of distractions. Matter of fact, guys, I want to tell you straight up, it's not cool being a Christian. Because the first time, thing that if you meet anybody, what's the first question every guy asks the other guy? What do you do? Right? In the first couple conversations, and you don't like to say I'm a garbage collector. Or whatever. We, can't, we don't call them garbage collectors anymore. They are now sanitary engineers. Because we want it to look good. And, and I know as men, that it seems like it hurts our pride to sit there and say, I'm following Jesus. But can I tell you something? America needs men. Now, you can coach baseball, you can do all those things, but when you're doing it, you're supposed to be telling about Jesus. And it's so easy to do life lessons with them and say, that's why I love God. That's why it's amazing. That's where I found destiny. I mean, you don't have to stand there and preach at them. It's just loving people and God wants you to do that but it takes that choice of saying God I'm willing to let go of my life and follow you now listen we're gonna have some amazing opportunities in the next two years in this church to radically touch our community and we're working on them someday I'm gonna reveal them to you but not yet but we got to realize something it's all of us touching everyone Bill, you're not the only Bill in here. There's lots of Bills in here with the same stories that you messed up your life. You went the wrong way. You crashed it. You wrecked it. You destroyed it. I did. And I was even a pastor and I did it. And I did a pretty good job of it. But we got to realize it takes that choice of dying. And with heads bowed and eyes closed, please, I don't want anyone looking around. I wonder if there's someone in here this morning that will raise their hand and say, Pastor Jerry, I need to let go of my life and I need to start dying and I need to let God take control of my life. And I want to become everything God wants me to become. I want you to slip up your hand and raise your hand and say, Pastor Terry, that's me. I need to start doing that. I see hands all over this place. I want to do that. I want to start living differently. You can put your hands down. Hey, if you're online with Facebook or watching us on YouTube, we're really glad you're there. And we just want to invite you to do the same thing, that Jesus loves you and thinks you're amazing. And God bless you. We're going to kind of go away for a minute. Thank you.